Bonding and coordination compounds. Recall that the d orbitals have the following shapes shown here. All are equal in energy in the absence of ligands. In an isolated transition metal atom, the five d orbitals are degenerate in energy. They have the same energy. However, when a ligand comes in and bonds to the transition metal, the d orbitals are split, three lower and two above. This is called crystal field splitting. The crystal field splitting, given the symbol delta, is the energy difference between two sets of d orbitals in a metal atom when the ligands are present. If we have an electron in one of the lower d orbitals and energy impinges on it, that energy excites the electron to an upper d orbital. It absorbs energy, shown here, and we could actually calculate that energy difference as h nu. The colors of these solutions of these transition metal atoms, or ions, is shown here and is the result of those electrons moving between the lower d orbitals and the upper d orbitals. The absorption maximum for the complex ion, hexamine cobalt-3, occurs at 470 nanometers. What is the color of the complex and what is the crystal field splitting in kilojoules per mole? In order to determine the color, we need a color wheel. Here the complex absorbs at 470 nanometer, which is the blue region of the spectrum. But the absorption is what the energy goes into the uh, complex. What we see is the complementary color, the orange. Delta again is equal to h nu or hc over lambda, substituting in Planck's constant, the speed of light, and changing the 470 nanometers to meters, we calculate an energy of 4.23 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. In kilojoules, we have to take that and divide by Avogadro's number and convert joules to kilojoules. It becomes 255 kilojoules per mole. Again, looking at the bonding and coordination compounds, there arises from these ligands what is called a spectrochemical series. The strong ligands are cobalt, cyanide, and ethylene diamine. The weak ones are the halogens on the left. The weak field ligands have a small delta, that is the distance between the lower and upper energy difference between the lower and upper D levels is small. With strong field ligands, the energy difference is large. Effectively, this is what happens. Shown here is the iron 3 plus ion, and then the iron with six fluorines, and that forms a high spin complex. Because of the weak ligand field, the d orbitals are close to one another, so they populate according to Hund's rule. Look at cyanide with the iron, the six cyanides. This is a strong ligand field, big difference between the lower and upper D levels, and we violate Hund's rule. That is, we put the electrons in the lower ones first, and then if forced to, the upper ones. These are the orbital diagrams for high and spin, high spin and low spin octahedral complexes. This diagram shows the crystal field splitting in a tetrahedral complex. Notice that it's the opposite of the octahedral. Crystal field splitting in a square planar complex is even more com complex. Shown here are porphyrin and iron porphyrin. This forms the heme and hemoglobin. In this case, we're looking at myoglobin with only one heme. Notice that the iron is hexacoordinated to the protein, to four nitrogens, and to the water molecule. This is how oxygen is transported in the body. Cisplatin is also an interesting transition metal complex. It's an anti-cancer drug. It works by attaching to the DNA, causing the unraveling of the DNA and the inability of it to reproduce. 
stopping the growth of the cancer cells.